Hey what's up guys welcome to my channel and today we are going to look at a few more interesting things about events in Livewire. In the last video of this series we looked at how we can use events to communicate between multiple components and how we can even send data from one component to the other based on some interaction that happened on some component by a user whether it is a click whether it is something else right. Now, there are a couple of more ways that you can interact with events in Livewire and this is what we are going to look at in this video. So the first option that I'm going to show you is where if an event happens or if an event is raised by a component anywhere in the application, the wrapper div can react to it. So for example, let's just take this page so we have an events page we have the events blade component uh, sorry the view file and then there are multiple components inside that right so I'll just show you the code if you haven't followed from the last video this is my event page component what is you know, kind of rendering this entire thing and this is my blade file so I'll just open that up as well this is it so what will happen is if any of the component here raises an event called get dash name then I can run some JavaScript over here for example I can do hi okay let's see so I change my name over here or rather click me and okay nothing happened that's a bit weird I was expecting it to change sorry I think it's got name let me quickly check that inside events main component got name yeah so that's why it was not getting triggered click me and can you see i'm able to execute a javascript function from within that div so what happened basically because of this i have created an event listener at this div level and what it will do is if an event is raised from any component which is with inside this div then it is going to react to it now if let's just say we have one div which is not inside the component you know based on the um, hierarchy what is happening I think when I copied it was carrying that extra thing so I'll have a different div something like that okay now we saw that when I was making that change it would show that alert but now it is not going to happen. Why? Because these components are not within this div. If it's something like this okay if I hit refresh put somewhere here I can see it is working. However when they are outside that div If I fill that input field and if I click that button it is not working but then there is a way to do that as well I'll just put a window property to it hit refresh now if I click can you see it is working so basically previously if I don't add the dot window property it was only trying to listen to events which which were raised by the components which are within the DOM element but with the dot window property which we added here now it is basically looking for events on the entire window and if any component raises that event it will listen to it now we saw that we can listen to events even within these divs right but when it comes to raising events there are definitely ways which we have seen if you remember we were dispatching events like this but if you want something very simple we can also do that for example in here if I have one more div and I have a button over here if I do something like this it is also going to work which basically means I don't need to run a function I don't do a don't need to do a wire click and 
do stuff. So if you have some list kind of thing, you can directly work with that. So I'll just show you that this basically works. So if I do dispatch, it first runs the alert because if you remember, we still have this. And if I click OK, all these elements, because they are listening to that event, change their name to what I have sent over here. You can set anything. So for example, I'll just show you so that a little more clarity is present. Um, let's just say, okay, I have a public array names, something like that. Maybe I'll run a loop. And now I would ideally want this to be something like, I think it's a single thing. Let me, let me check. So, so we have three buttons over here. Yes. Okay. This is coming as dollar name. So I think it's double curly braces. I'll just check that. Yeah. So you can see if there is some iteration going on, you don't need to run a I mean, write a function which takes that parameter and then sends that as a dispatch event or something like that. You can very simply do this one liner thing and you are done with it, right? So we understand the use case why this is a little helpful, right? Now, there is one more method which is available, but I don't know how in a real life example I would, I would be using it. But let's say, you know, we have a dispatch thing over here, which is you know, um, running as an event being raised and every component is listening to it, right? But for some reason, if you want to raise an event which is specifically for a component and not other components, if, if you have that kind of a requirement, we can potentially do that. For example, I'll, I'll just copy this entire thing, let's just say, again, okay. So I have three more buttons again coming up. And instead of this dispatch, let me do wire, click, send to third. Let me add that method over here. We have something like this. And over here, what I will do is this. Dispatch the event. This is the data that I'm trying to send. And then there's one more thing called. Two. And here I am saying that I'm sending this event only to the third child component. Now with this, let me refresh a bit. And when I click on Amitav, something went away for third only. Can you see that? Maybe I'll send something else. Um, checking. Okay. Refresh a bit. And if you see the name only changed in the default, uh, in the third component, the default child continues to be the same. Hence, as I said, I still don't know what is the real life use case of this kind of a thing. But if you want to send an event to a specific component, then you can do that by dispatching an event with the two parameter. Uh, I mean, calling the two method on top of it and mentioning the name of the component, which you want to send that event. Okay. So that's about it, guys. That's what I wanted to cover in this video. There are some more ways, you know, you can play around with the events and yeah, that that's what I showed you. So yeah, if you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have recently seen that more than uh, you know, uh, 50 or 60% uh, users or viewers on my channel are not subscribers. So I would request you to 
at least hit that subscribe button so that you know i can receive a little more subscribers and that would help me you know reach more people so yeah thanks for watching bye